Hey guys, in our previous few lessons, we've looked at the graph of direct variation equations y equals k times x and y equals k times x squared. We found that one was a line and one was a parabola. Well, today we're going to shift our attention to inverse variation equations and take a look at the graph of y equals k divided by x and y equals k divided by x squared. As always, it's a little bit of new terminology that we're going to have to learn. Let's start off with talking about the graph of the inverse function y equals k divided by x. This is an inverse variation equation. It is a set of all points x and y where the constant is k such that it forms a hyperbola. And the x and y axes are the asymptotes of the function. Kind of a fun word to say there, asymptotes. It's about as close to a dirty word in math as we get. All right, now what exactly is an asymptote? you might wonder, well, that definition is right down here. It's a line that the graph approaches but doesn't touch. You can kind of think of it like a fence line or a boundary line. All right, next up you have the graph of y equals k divided by x squared. This graph is called the inverse square. Now, it's also an inverse variation function, and it looks very similar to the graph of y equals k over x. However, it's going to appear closer to the x and y axes. And just like in the inverse variation equation, y equals k over x, x and y axis will also be asymptotes for this graph. Now, we get little pictures of them over here on our notes. Um, however, in our next few examples, we're going to take a closer, more in-depth look at what these graphs are. So in example one, we're again going to use Desmos. We're going to create the equation y equals k over x, and we're going to create a slider for k. That's going to allow us again to dynamically see how this graph changes as we adjust that value of k. Then we're going to be asked to just answer these questions. All right? As we change the value of k, as k gets larger, describe the movement of the branches. So those are the parts of that hyperbola. As k gets smaller but stays positive, what happens to those branches? So let's start off by taking a look at our graph of y equals k divided by x. You can see here that we've created again our slider for k, and right now k has the value of 1. So this is really y equals 1 over x. Well here it is, it appears in quadrants 1 and 3, the odd quadrants. And as k gets larger and larger, you can see those branches pulling away from our axes. As it gets smaller and smaller, but stays positive, you can see that those branches pull closer and closer to the x-axis. As soon as k goes to zero, you can see that we form this horizontal line or the x-axis, and that's just the equation y equals zero. All right, so let's go back to our notes and answer these questions. As k got larger, describe the movement of the branches. Well, we said that the branches moved further away from the axes. And we'll describe that as the x and y axes. As k got smaller but stayed positive, what happened to the branches? Well, now our branches moved closer. And we're going to say closer to the x and y axes. And we're also going to make a note that in both of these, when k was positive, that means k was greater than 0, we appeared in quadrants 1 and 3. Now, that will make a difference here in just a second when you see us change the value of k to negative. Part C asks us to drag the slider so that k is negative to tell what happens to the branches of the graph. Now, what quadrants do those branches appear in? And then finally, it asks us to give the domain and the range of this function, y equals k over x. So let's take a look at our graph here again, and we're going to change our slider to where k is now negative. Ah, you can see here where k is equal to negative 4, or somewhere close to negative 4. Our branches went from being in quadrants 1 and 3 to now being in quadrants 2 and 4. However, the same rule applies. As the negative value got larger and larger, our branches moved away from the axes, and as it came closer and closer to 0, they moved closer to the axes. All right, so as k became more negative, we'll say, we notice that our branches went to quadrants 
2 and 4 and moved away from the axes. All right, Let's see if we can fit all of this in here. Let me just erase this little blurb. All right. Finally, our last question here dealing with this graph asks us for the domain and the range. And you can see our little diagram over here. And this obviously is where k is greater than 0 because we should note when k is less than 0, we're going to appear in quadrants 2 and 4. However, when k is greater than 0, we're in quadrants 1 and 3. Now, our domain for this is going to be the set of all real numbers such that it is not equal to 0. And you can see if we were to flatten this graph on the x-axis, all the negative x values would be covered, all the positive x values would be covered. However, 0 would not be covered because that y-axis is an asymptote. Likewise, for our range, our range is going to be all real values such that they are not equal to 0. And the same principle applies. Our positive y values are covered, our negative y values are covered, but 0 has a little hole in it. So here's our domain and range for the graph of y equals k over x. Next up, we're going to explore the inverse variation function y equals k over x squared. We're going to do the same thing by dragging the slider and making observations about what happens to our branches and what quadrants it appears in. So let's go back and we're going to now change our function. Now we have y equals k over x squared. Let's bring our k value back up in here to the positive 1. So we can see now we have this inverse square function. Kind of looks like the Eiffel Tower a bit. And it's opening up. And it's in quadrants 1 and 2. And notice where k is positive. Well, as we increase the value of k, the same thing happens to our branches. They're going to move away from the axes. As we get closer and closer to 0, and our k value gets smaller and smaller, we're moving closer and closer to the axes until we get to 0, and then we have just the line y equals 0. All right, let's go to our notes and answer those questions. As k got larger, the movement of the branches, we stayed in quadrants 1 and 2 and they moved away from the axes. All right. Our next question then asks us, as k got smaller but stayed positive, what happened to the branches and which quadrants of the branches, or, or which quadrant do the graph of the branch, the branches of the graph appear in? So we're in quadrants one and two still. We're opening up, so to speak, and they moved closer to x and y axis. All right, next you might have guessed this. We are going to drag the slider so that k is negative. And we're going to make a prediction about what happens to those branches of the graph. Well, my prediction is that those branches are now going to open down and appear in quadrants 3 and 4. So let's take a look and see if we're right. Here we go into the negative zone. Our Inverse square now opens down, and you can see that as we get larger and larger negative values of k, it's moving away from the x and y axis, which, by the way, are also asymptotes for this graph. So um, we are now moving into quadrants 3 and 4. Oops. And uh, we're going to say that our branches moved away from the x and y axis. All right, finally, we're asked to uh, explain why x equals 0 is not a valid input. Well, if you were to think about the graph of y equals k over 0 squared, or even k over 0, you cannot divide a number by 0. This is actually undefined. And that's why, uh, and that's why for our domain and our range, we leave the value of x equals 0 out. And that's also why the x and y axis are asymptotes for this graph. Finally, we're asked to explain what the domain and the range is for this graph. So domain here, are my x values are going to be all real numbers that are not equal to 0. For my range, it depends 
on what my k value is. If my k is positive, this inverse square is going to open up. And therefore, it's going to be all reals that are greater than 0. Notice that there are no negative y values of part of this graph. However, if my inverse square opened down, then I'd have to change that to being all reals that are less than 0. Again, it does not equal 0 because that x-axis is an asymptote of this function.